Hey friends, hope you're doing well. I am back with another YouTube video and in this YouTube video, we are going to learn how to paint this amazing and beautiful composition and I will be explaining you each and everything from very start, from very scratch to the end, from each and every color and each and every art supply. So don't forget to like and leave a comment in this video and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Let's get into the video right now. Friends, I'm gonna start with all the basic art supplies that I'm gonna use. So starting with the watercolor palette, I'm using this, my studio watercolor palette. It is huge, it is having a really nice mixing area. You can see it is really good and they're all my watercolors. I do not like half pans or even full pans, barely. So I like to pour my watercolors into something like this. And with the watercolor paper, I am using Chatrapat uh, watercolor paper. It is 440 GSM and it is 100% cotton, rough texture, but you can use any other watercolor paper. You can use either Arceus. I would really recommend if you can go and use 100% cotton watercolor paper because that is gonna change your game like this. And the next is this brush, which is Golan Natural, and it is a blend of Kolinsky or Sable and um, synthetic brush and it is round size 8. I used this brush uh, like yesterday and I'm really loving it. It got a really nice point and actually it is having a really good control kind of. So yeah, I was really loving this brush. So every time I am putting my brush over to the, this side, I am putting it in water. So you, uh, so you know, you just have a little bit of idea why I'm going back to here. Most probably I will be speaking the colors which I am gonna use or gonna mix and I'm gonna paint in portrait position because it looks really good when I did it yesterday. So I'm gonna mix permanent red rose and it's Grenachidone from Da Vinci and I'm gonna mix a red rose, uh, rose dune metal leg and it is from Sennelier. Basically I'm using a cool uh, red and a warm red and mixing them up so using my palette, my mixing area. I'm just gonna show it to you. So I'm gonna mix it over here. So you can see here it was a warm red and here it was a cool red. I just mixed it and now I'm just gonna go and paint the petal. So I'm just gonna leave, I'm not gonna like fully color the petal. I'm just gonna leave some white spaces. It's like a really loose style and I really enjoyed it. Just not being very precise with the shape of the petal. And now I'm just gonna alternatively going back and forth to the cool and the red, uh, warm red. I'm gonna paint exact same petal over here, leaving the white spaces in between. And make sure your initial layers are lighter as compared because you are gonna layer it afterwards and then you, they are gonna get darker. So picking up some more color from the palette. So I am just gonna leave these white spaces in between. And you can see I'm painting the whole petal just in one, uh, one stroke. You know, I just start from here, then go back. Just doing this, all right. And then there is this one petal now, which is just folded. So make sure that we are not doing that original and very real style. We are just kind of doing an illustrative style. So try to loosen up and enjoy the process. So the, this is the petal which is add behind of these two petals. Same happening over here. I'm gonna paint a petal which is sitting behind these two petals. And if the color is blending, it is completely fine because you can just do it afterwards. You can fix it afterwards. All right, so you're gonna paint exact same thing again and again. Just alternate, just change, just randomly changing the position. I'm going back with the same mix, but this time I'm adding a lot of water because I want to make this flower a little bit more lighter as compared to the what we did now. So I'm gonna pick up really light tone and just a little bit of more water. You can see it is so light, so peachy. Really loved it. And now a petal over here. So I have painted the half petal with the color 
Now half petal with the washer, just let them blend, let it blend, you know, it looks really good, a really good effect and if your color is granulating, the granulation is gonna come up really good, but mostly the reds are not granulating, so, but still it looks good, you know, the property of watercolor. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of stronger color and gonna paint the petals which are present at the back. So see, I am just being very loose color is bleeding I'm not worrying I get a lot of questions from my student that Karan I'm not able to control the watercolors you don't have to control the watercolors because they are meant to bleed so just relax and paint and now I'm gonna pay, place a flower over here you know just randomly placing the flower I'm breaking the symmetry don't pay it uh, don't place your flowers in a very symmetrical manner like a square or uh, you know a pentagon or something like just break the symmetry it looks way better as compared to the symmetrical flowers so I'm gonna place the exact same flower over here a little bit darker maybe You just alternatively have to switch to the dark and the light flowers because that looks way better as compared to something that is just one monotone. Also alternatively switching to the light and the cool pink or the red shade. This petal is a little bit more puffier as compared to the earlier one but it is completely fine. And you can see this brush is having such a nice control to it. Absolutely loving it. And now I'm just gonna place a petal over here. And now I'm gonna pick up some more color and gonna place a petal which is just sitting at the back side of this flower. You can always go back and fix the color, something that you're gonna face uh, you're gonna have a hard time in is maybe the size of the petal is gonna be big or small so you can just go back and fix it however you're comfortable no restrictions at all now I'm placing a petal over here and a really nice shaped petal over here you know just something different from other petals viewing it from different view and then a petal over here now you can see I moved from the warm to the cool so it looks really good you can just do it leaving those white spaces adding a lot of contrast placing a petal over here basically I will be placing the whole flower over here so this petal is small as compared to this petal because uh, this uh, this petal view is from another like it is at an angle so it is viewing a little bit smaller but this is completely from the other view so it is having another size place a folded petal over here because we are exaggerating the, at the point where all the petals are being from different angles. So now once your flowers have dried you can just layer them. I do not wait for flowers to dry because most probably the first flower that I've painted has dried on its own naturally. So I don't have to pay a lot of attention to that part. So I'm just gonna with the start, same uh, manner how, how I painted like first this flower then this 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 in that case I will get to the flower dried already but if you are in such an area where your paper dries really slow then you can just wait for some time or you can use your air dryer to dry it 
So I'm just gonna go in same manner what we did earlier, but a little bit less area, covering less area. So suppose I'm taking a little bit of darker color as comparatively, and now I'm just painting the strokes in the same manner, but this time I'm covering less area, unlike I did earlier. Doing exact same step. So you can see, it looks really good. It is just showing the high contrast areas. And I'm gonna repeat exact same uh, step to the every petal that I'm gonna paint now. And I'm gonna lighten up the color a little bit when I'm gonna paint this flower because I want to pay a lot of attention to the tone that it is giving. It is way more lighter as compared to this flower. Just covering less area as compared to what we did earlier. Just moving in same manner. And now I'm going back to the this flower, which has dried most probably. I am darkening up the color a little bit more. And now I'm gonna move to this flower. I guess I was supposed to move to this flower because it has dried and it hasn't, but it is completely fine. I guess it is mostly dried by now. So if you are painting while watching this video and if you are unable to match the pace, you can just pause the video or I would really recommend if you can just wait for some time, uh, watch the video first and then paint because then you are going to grasp a lot of information. I always recommend my students to watch first, make notes and then paint. All right, I'm, I guess I'm really happy, but now I'm gonna take a little bit more darker color. I'm gonna take Alizarin Crimson. You can use it from any brand. I'm using the one from M. Graham. And, and now I'm, paint, I'm gonna paint even less as compared to the second layer. It is just the very final last details. All right, like very fine details. Even if you want to skip this step, it is completely fine. But I guess it adds a lot of interest to your painting. So I'm just gonna paint it. Just not on every petal, randomly, wherever you want to. All right. I guess I'm done with that much part and I'm gonna let it dry or maybe I'm just gonna paint another component of this composition. So I am gonna paint few buds which will soon grow into these beautiful flowers. So I'm gonna take sap green and I'm gonna use the sap green from Da Vinci. It's really good or I also love uh, sap green from Windsor and Newton. It is also having a really good shade and I'm gonna take kind of fairly toned down version and I'm just gonna paint this long shaped in exact same manner I'm gonna leave the white space in between because it looks really good similar to what we did earlier in the petals just leaving the white space in between and I'm just gonna hide one at the back of this flower because you know when you are hiding stuff at the back of each other in a composition it looks way better as compared to something that is present uh, straight away in front of you it looks kind of more believable as compared so I'm 
just adding one or two outside So now you can see I'm not waiting uh, exactly for letting this flower dry. I am painting one thing, then I'm painting one another thing and then another thing and then get back to the first thing. So in the meantime, the first thing get dries. So that's how I do and save the time. But it is completely fine if you want to use the artificial method of drying or you want to wait for flowers to dry. All right, now I am gonna let uh, make my brush really dry kind of really dry i'm gonna use really thick shade of green sap green exact same color that i used earlier i'm gonna use a very less amount of water and a lot of color basically a really thick consistency of color and now i'm gonna paint the pollen and the stamen part of the flower so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put my brush to almost 90 degree 80, 80 to 90 degree and then i am just gonna paint these long straight lines maybe some are just crossing each other you don't have to be just uh, make them parallel you can cross them you can bend them in wherever in whichever direction you want to and you can just paint like from seven to eight of them and then i'm just gonna dab like this and it's gonna give that pollen shape just painting the pollen in different directions few are lean towards the right or few are leans towards the left and i'm gonna repeat the exact same step in all the flowers you just have to move your brush to like this angle something like 8 ish a t i s h and then gonna draw these long stamens and gonna paint the pollen you can also use gouache for painting this because gouache is an opaque medium and it can cover up uh, more better in a more better manner as compared to what we are doing right now but i honestly like to stick with watercolors you can see they are just crossing each other they are not parallel and just gonna add a little bit of water because it got really dry You can see I'm painting in really loose manner. I'm not being very precise that where I have to play stuff. Just going with my intention. Also guys, do not forget to subscribe or like this video or leave a comment over here. That kind of give a lot of motivation for me to make more tutorials. So now I'm gonna get back to this bud part. I'm gonna take a little bit of more saturated uh, sap green color. I'm using exact same shade. I'm using the sap green and then I am gonna cover less area, like similar technique what we used earlier in the flowers. Also, if you are thinking that uh, in video my speed is really uh, like really good and you are actually painting really slow, it's completely fine. Go with your pace. You don't have to match my pace or my painting speed. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna paint leaves. Same step, same step, but in this time, I'm not gonna leave a lot of space. I'm gonna take first of all a very light shade of green and then I'm just gonna paint the leaf, few leaves at the back of the words and I'm gonna paint these long leaves. And then I first I just outline and then I am just gonna fill up the area. I'm going to do exact same step here and there like few petals just at the back of the flower. I guess you have to be a little bit careful in this process because you are hiding if uh, you can either paint the flowers on the flower uh, you can either paint the leaves on the flower but you know you really have to watch out that step because you can ruin your flowers too and then I am just gonna Add few leaves here and there, few out of out of this like almost flowerish area. And 
and few over here again hiding at the back of stuff so now mostly it's like i'm covering the up the area more comparatively to putting the flowers in the composition and now i'm going to take even more darker shade of green let the leaves dry and i'm going to go and work on the birds i'm taking adding undersea green from daniel smith it is darker shade of green and i'm just going to add few strokes here and there just to add the depth and the contrast And now you can just go and join it with a stem because you know components are not floating in the air. You have to paint stems so that it all get like get connected to each other, flowers and everything. So I'm just gonna paint the stem and make sure the thickness of your flower is uh, make sure the thickness of your stem is almost same. Now I'm gonna paint. Uh, use exact same technique for the leaves. I'm just gonna paint these long strokes and leaving some area in between. Taking a little bit of more darker shade. Uh, this is pure undersea green, and now I'm just gonna add like few things here and there, like maybe a petal over here. Few things here and there, nothing very complex. You can just add this a small long leaves to the buds, which looks really good. And one over here. I guess we are done with the composition. If I'm gonna paint more, it's gonna like really ruin the legibility and the beauty of this composition. I don't want to overwork on this composition. And I guess I'm really happy with it, what it came out. And I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, just leave a comment, really good comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And I will be back with another tutorial very soon.